for today's international webinar on the topic the real and unreal the visual perception of images jointly organized by the school of media studies petition college of arts and science and department of journalism and communication college of social science and humanities bulevara university call upon manual secondary electronic media to start this event with a prayer praise the lord Almighty and loving Father, Creator of heaven and earth, we praise you and adore you. We are gathered here for this webinar on the real and unreal, the visual perception of images, which is organized by School of Media Studies. Thank you for your blessing to learn and improve our talents. Predominantly, thank you for this opportunity, which is given by Petrician College of Arts and Science. Lord, we pray that we should be able to use this qualification and knowledge to go out and bless the world. Please foster within them a continued passion for the learning as the journey onwards. Lord, bless this program and students. Prominently, I pray for the guest speaker, Dr. S. Ilungo. Bless his handwork, give him good health and strength. And thank you for the phenomenal grace upon us. Be with us for the entire webinar without any technical issue. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I pray this trusting and believing in you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Manuel, for this wonderful prayer. Now I call upon HRE Department of the SCOM, the Habibur Rahman, to introduce the chief guest of today's webinar. A warm good afternoon to one and all gathered through Google Meet and YouTube. I, on behalf of School of Media Studies, welcome everyone for this webinar on the real and unreal, the visual perception of images. I welcome the dignitaries of Bulehura University for this international webinar. I also welcome I also welcome the staff members of the university and students of both institution. I feel elated to introduce the resource person of the day, Dr. S. Ilango, assistant professor and head PG Department of Electronic Media, St. Thomas College of Arts and Science. He has 20 years of teaching experience in the field of electronic media and visual communication. He did his BSc visual communication in design in the year 1985 to 1990, which is a five-year integrated professional degree program in the Department of Visual Communication Design by Government College of Fine Arts, Chennai. In December 1990, MA Mass Communication and Journalism from Alagappa University and MSc Electronic Media from Bharadiyar University, MPhil Mass Communication and Journalism in April 2007 from Kamaraj University, and he has cleared his UGC net in the year 2008, and he has also completed his PhD in Communication in the year 2017 from Bharadiyar University in the area of Graphic Design. He has held various academic position in his career and notable position is that in 2020 December, he has nominated and elected as academic council member to the University of Madras from St. Thomas College of Arts and Science for the academic year 2020-2021. He has been an examiner, board of study member, external subject expert, external member academic audit, chief superintendent, principal in charge, University Examination Squad Member, External Panel Member for Entrance Examination, President Alumni Association in and outside the college. His area of interest are Communication Research Methods, Media Aesthetics, Visual Research Methods, Script Writing and Story Development. <laughs> He has published papers in journals, seminars, conference at the state, national and international level and has served as guest speaker in seminar and webinar. To add further to his cap, he received best teacher for the year 2004-2005 and 2013-2014 to in St. Thomas College of Arts and Science. He is the recipient of decennial award from the St. Thomas College of Arts and Science for completing 10 years of his service during the year 2010 to 2011. We are so glad to have such an eminent person with us. We thank you, sir, for readily accepting our invite and for gracing this occasion with your valuable presence. We are so eager to hear it from you, sir. Thank you, everyone. 
Thank you, sir. How would one describe an image? Interesting, pleasant, aesthetic. A number of studies have classified images with respect to their attributes. So what makes a beautiful movie? We can focus on three main components, composition, color, and lighting, just like photography. Besides being a treat to the eyes, all three components in harmony make cinematography a key storytelling device. Setting the tone for every scene, not only films, but in every media. So talk about this interesting topic. We will invite Dr. S. Ilango for this session. Sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I thank uh, Patrician College and uh, Bulwara University dignitaries for giving me this opportunity to present to the students. Uh, shall I present my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can. You can proceed, sir. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I am very glad to present the topic, the real and unreal, the visual perception of images. See, we live with images now. Uh, every day we have the environment uh, only with visuals the, uh, around the world has changed into a uh, visual domination and visual constructive environment and we have to uh, uh, follow the same. So what is image? I, I want to brief about the characteristics and qualities of image. So image is an artifact that depicts visual perception such as a photograph, or other two-dimensional picture that resembles a subject, usually a physical object, and thus provides a depiction of it. An image may be a drawing, painting, photograph, design, graph, etc. A volatile image is one that exists only for a short period of time. This may be a reflection of an object by a mirror, a projection of a camera obscura, or a scene displayed on a cathode ray tube. Any human perception through eyes is considered as a real image. We will see the characteristics. A fixed image is called hard copy. It is one that has been recorded on a material object such as paper, cloth, vinyl, wall, metal, plastic or any other printable and painted surface. A mental image exists in, in an individual's mind as something one remembers or imagines. The subject of the image need not be real. It may be an abstract concept. The image may be a construction of ideas by a creative artist, designer, sculptor, or a photographer. A real image is a reproduction of what we see through our eyes, and any reproduction of any conceptual ideas made by human and living creatures is an image. So how we perceive image? Let us see. Visual perception starts with the light emitted from or reflected from an object or a scene entering our eyes through the cornea, pupil and lens. The cornea and the lens help to concentrate and project the light onto a photosensitive layer of cells located at the back of the eyeball, the retina. Thus we have this perception, visual perception. Then what is virtual image? A virtual image is defined as one that is formed through electronic form and cannot be reached by us. The best example of virtual image is one formed on a screen and through a mirror. So a virtual image is defined as the opposite of a real, real image. Virtual image that cannot be reached by us. <coughs> Uh, 
Now let us see how images influence our mind. Because we are living in the visual era. 90% of uh, things are going with only visual communication today. So some quotes I, have, I want to refer here. Quoting from Neymar Reports interview with Marcel Just, director of the Center for Cognitive Brain Imaging at Cornell Mellon University. Processing print isn't something the human brain was built for. The printed word is a human artifact. It's a very convenient and it's, it's worked very well for us for 5,000 years. But it's an invention of human beings. By contrast, Mother Nature has built into our brain our ability to see the visual world and interpret it. Even the spoken language is much more a given biologically than reading written language. See how our brain connects images. We have several points in the brain network which stores images. So the activity of the brain retains images whatever we see for very long time. Further, Marcel just says, most people have seen the illustrations in magazines and newspapers of hotspots in the brain when a person is thinking. Those accurately depict where the activity is and tells which brain areas are in play. For the first time, we have been able to identify what concept a person is thinking about from their brain activity. We use machine learning algorithms to put together what is being coded in various places in the brain so that we can determine what concept the person is thinking about. In effect, we can read their mind. This is a reference from Marcel Just. Further, a finding says that 90% of the information transmitted to the brain is visual. Further, visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than text. It's a, it is enormous and it is unimaginable. In my presentation here, I am trying to add images because what I am interpreting with you, I am trying to transfer the content into images. It reaches effectively and you can understand what I am trying to say. So today, visuals play a very import, important and prominent role in teaching, information, guides and manuals in medical field. It is really a very valid presentation. We are using some reference here, cutaway and exploded view drawings, how images are interpreted for explanation and documentation. I want to show some images. So the, see, there is a car. It's, it is a called cutaway illustration. That is, that is, it shows the inner parts. So anyone who services a car or a mechanic or a person who want to handle the inner parts can easily understand the various components. This is one part of uh, presenting the inner parts. And this is exploded view of drawing, assembling, how to assemble the components. These type of illustrations are used in manuals and various uh, reports. When you include visuals, your performance improves dramatically. Photos are liked twice as frequently as text and videos are liked 12 times as often. So go visual. We are, we are in, in the visual era and in every aspect we are doing uh, many graphical and visual pre presentations to make the complex into simple. That's the uh, process now we are adapting. So social media is also a great delivery platform for visually driven sales. Say 93% of Pinterest users use the platform to plan purchases. Shopify, a re ad recall, brand awareness and purchase consideration experience lift within the first second of a Facebook video ad playing. Consumers view native ads such as those on social media 52% more than banner ads. So strong visual content boosts your credibility. See, in marketing, most of the things are handled in visual concentration. Content marketers can support their sales teams and build their brands by communicating a sense of quality through visual content too. When Stanford Web Credibility compiled a list of the 10 most 
critical factors affecting perceived credibility of websites number 6 on the list was a professional looking presentation we find that people quickly evaluate a site by visual design alone the researchers note when designing your site pay attention to layout typography images consistency issues and more of course not all sites gain credibility by looking like ibm.com the visual design should match the site's purpose now let us see image and imagination what is imagination what we imagine maybe an image or maybe something else also imagination so i am relating image and imagination so imagination is the image making power of the mind imagination is the image making power of the mind <coughs> so the act of creating or reproducing ideally an object not previously perceived the ability to create such images while image is an optical or other representation of a real object a graphic a picture imaginary taste and smells are as common as imaginary sights and sounds and we can smell or taste something in our imagination it is easy to to imagine that someone is in great pain but would imagery of a pain be like it is difficult to make an imaginary for imagery for pain but we can imagine about pain about the uh, sufferings of pain so imagery is confined to the copyable and pictureable but imagination is not one can paint or draw how one imagined something looked or sounded like it does not follow that one can paint how imagined a problem could be solved the possibility and the common occurrence of instances of imagining in various forms which do not or could not contain any imagery shows that imagination does not imply imagery the short answer is that imagery has characteristics which imagination has not and lacks characteristics which imagination has i am showing some strong visuals done by ragu roy a photographer indian photographer a prominent photographer in india has done lot of uh, studies and traveled to various places in india and around and in various critical situations he has taken photographs some of his images are very powerful and we i share here to understand the value of image how worth a image communicates to the audience i think you can enjoy the real photograph of ragurai images are fundamental to brain mind and self they emerge from a mind that loves to play and a mind that loves to create visuals quickly transmit information to our brain they trigger our emotions they help us learn and remember why is visual communication so powerful it isn't just because of the pretty pictures it straight up signs the brain absorbs and synthesizes visual information faster than any other stimuli making visual content an incredibly effective medium that's why we enjoy photographs photography is a very uh, very powerful tool film medium is a very powerful tool the human brain is able to recognize a familiar object with 100 milliseconds people tend to recognize familiar faces within 380 milliseconds which is pretty speedy i think you are, you could understand the power of image see the power of image this is also a photograph taken by raguroy in traveling usually black and white photography communicates more effectively and gives more value to the subject some of the reference i am telling here 
see this is a collection of uh, human skull this is also taken by raguray and see how it uh, disturbs our mind various critical uh, situations images play a vital role in one frame how so many things are inc incorporated it speaks a lot about street children about the poverty about the environment where people are li living in various circumstances this is a very good composition and it is it is also by uh, mr raguray as a very very interesting image which depicts so many uh, visual narrations visual representations uh, composition uh, eye contact the pain uh, the critical situation uh, the people are handling their environment the survival so that's why a single image can be very powerful can tell so many features a, a single shot can give so many features that is the role of a best photographer a photographer is a person who captures a frame with many ideologies with many emotions with many informations to share see we can see various emotions in this children sitting here you age the lady cooking somebody is watching in here some of the uh photographs from top angle these are all various snaps captured in various moments love and affection a single photograph can interpret see there is a finger of a child and uh, a uh, finger of uh, aged uh, person symbolically represents the emotions and love so symbol is a photography is a symbolic representation it symbolizes so many inner meanings every snap can interpret several multiple dimensions of life so such an image such a such a powerful is image that's why i i want to uh my intention to show these images it has a wide reach the way you handle images is very important so now i am now i am uh, now i am going to show some paintings uh, this is one of the you know you know i, I think mona lisa you know everybody knows it is the created by italian artist leonardo da vinci uh world famous still we are still we are enjoying a very uh, fantastic painting which shows uh, different dimensions when you see the painting in from one angle uh, it shows that uh, paint that the uh, uh, character watches you so many in any angle you can enjoy whether in left or right any in the panning movement no this painting used different uh, uh, representations one of the one of the famous painting in the art history of the world popular image to everyone created in the to everyone created in the renaissance period in 1503 archetypal masterpiece of the italian renaissance it has been described as the best known most visited you see most visited many number of people visited best known most written about the most sung about 
द मोस्ट पैराडॉइड वर्क ऑफ आर्ट इन द वर्ल्ड एवरीबडी इज एंजॉइंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ मोनोलिजा and another work of uh, michelangelo i i want to show, uh, share here because michelangelo is a very uh, prominent uh, painter who has created the sistine chapel the ceiling of a church it is very difficult to do painting in its uh, in the ceiling you know uh, we have to uh, See, I, I, even if, if you want to see a ceiling, we have to uh, tilt our head up. Uh, we have to strain ourselves. Uh, you think about how a person has done this uh, entire area of this uh, painting by lying down below the ceiling, by lying down below the ceiling with the structures. See how he has done it. It is a wonder. It is a wonder. Not we cannot uh, uh, do this. Uh, unimaginable. Nine, fifteen not eight to fifteen twelve. It was made cornerstone work of high Renaissance art. So these are all uh, uh, Renaissance period. Renaissance period is an important uh, period in the art history. So these uh, these works, Mona Lisa and the Sistine Chapel, are uh, wonders of the world. Still, we are enjoying. and see how much pain michelangelo has done uh, uh, to present this uh, that is unimaginable these are all powerful images so fraction of this chapel one part i am here again showing here this one uh, one part of this uh, chapel this is a very famous uh, painting see how detailing is there that is very very curious how much detail has been done in every part of the wall now i am just moving to some expressionistic paintings which creates different moods this is also during renaissance period this is called scream pain scream screen the c r e a m scream done by edward munch a painting that symbolizes the anguish and pain of modern life it has become one of the most famous pictures of, of modern times some important images i am showing because uh, to analyze and interpret the value of image uh, to the audience how images influence and disturbs and makes us happy and makes us uh, fresh uh, and uh, enthusiastic <coughs> and another thing is illusion uh, an illusion is a distortion of the senses which can reveal how the human brain normally organizes and interprets sensory stimulation although illusions distort our perception of reality they are generally shared by most people so illusion is here it is not stable it's a why what do you say it is a uh, something uh, not permanent it creates different perceptions and different uh, uh, meanings and ideologies an illusion is a distortion of the senses which can reveal how the human brain normally organizes and interprets sensory stimulation morris cornish acer was a dutch graphic artist who made mathematically inspired woodcuts this is a different type of uh, drawing which creates illusions so illusion uh, is one of the aster is one of the prominent persons who created uh, illusion type of uh, sketches that's why i am showing here so you cannot find a way here see it is something where to go and where to get in and where to get out it's an illusion here it will be revolving uh, in the same 
area in and out the in and out is not there now we will see the salt theory the desalt psychology school of psychology founded in the 20th century that provided the foundation for the modern study of perception the salt theory emphasizes the whole of anything is greater than its parts so this is an important uh, concept in visual communication uh, just i want to share the uh, concept of desalt I I explain with some visuals. So there are there are uh, some principles, some uh, of the salt, the law of closure, law of continuation, law of similarity, law of figure and ground, law of proximity, etc. So the graphical presentation here itself shows. So this is what we say closure. so there is if there is no continuity also if there is no uh, definite line on I mean, there is no definite line now uh, even though we can imagine a subject that what the desalt the theory says that is uh, it connects the elements the law of closure says that it connects the elements and represent a image Hello. Is there any disturbance? Shall I proceed? Shall I proceed, sir? Hello. Sir, yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. Okay. And similarity. See similarity. Similar elements. Uh, figure and ground relation. That is the image and non-image area. See in this, you can see the image area and non-image area. How it is constructed? Then proximity. Uh, some of the other images also you can show. See this is what we say: Jessalt effect. See, see the here. Uh, there is no connectivity, but there are uh, non-image and image area. So the non-image and image area uh, gives the whole form. The brain considers this. See the, in this cube also. See there is a cube and dots. So the brain's innate organizing tendencies allow us to perceive things as organized whole rather than individual elements. These are all some samples of this desalt effects. More examples are here. See this. See see these graphics. Uh, a flower vase, then star image, and dots. these are all concepts of desalt say a dotted line even even dotted graphics uh we we construct the image of a dog there is no outline the background and foreground construct the whole form this is one of the principle of desalt So here also there are two components, circle and triangle. So how the circle and triangle is connected? How image and non-image is connected? That is the concept. There are two faces in the black portion, and there is a face in the white portion. How black and white? Are connected. How black and white are connected. So what I am trying to say, uh, in every image or a photograph or a graphic or a painting, the audience should consider both the background and image. That is the point I am. In, uh, I am insisting. So in any design or a in any visual image, there is a meaning. with background and foreground that is the uh, uh, point we have to consider so background and uh, foreground cannot be uh, dismantled they are together always 
so you, you see in graphics in, in graphics and brand images in, in logos and all we are doing this in typography also we can see we can say this typography we are using this uh, technique in uh, branded uh, in logo making also we are using this technique in uh, brand names also we are using in signs in semiotics we are using this technique figure and ground so the figure and ground relation what i am telling here uh, in every image the part of the background role is very important the role of the background is very important whereas foreground and background are interconnected and interrelated foreground and background are interconnected and interrelated i think See how elements, elements are com composed. Elements are composed. So it, it all the uh, thai, uh, five, all the five and the six parts uh, together constructs the ball. This is what I uh, just now I have uh, interpreted the background and the foreground role. And this is uh, another component of a drawing. There are two faces here. I think the audience can see this effectively. Spend a, spend a little here, concentrate on this image, and you can see there are two interpretations in this image. There are two interpretations. audience can understand this are you able to grab this image this is actually an and and young lady and old lady there are two dimensions here young lady and old lady if you see this particular, uh, particular uh, consider uh, this as a nose uh, consider this as a nose and chin and chin and this is old lady face old this lady is eye face this is eye and if you take this particular part alone this is the young lady's face i think i think the audience can uh, see these two dimensions of this image The, here also there are two interpretations. Here also there are two interpretations. It is a familiar, familiar illustration. Duck and rabbit. Duck and rabbit. Okay, now I am moving to... Now I am moving to some important, uh, important paintings uh, i want to show here paintings i want to show here uh, my is my uh, voice is audible my, uh, is it voice clear is audible is it clear hello 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 yeah. is my uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. i have, yes, sir. I have yes, sir. a echo i have, yes, a, I have yes, a echo echo is there echo echo is there is it clear is it clear Yes yes. Ah, yes, yes. This is actually a painting of a painting of Raja Ravi Verma. Raja Ravi Verma. Saraswati, Saraswati painting by Indian painter. Painting by Indian painter. Uh, uh, so what, why, why, why I am why, showing why, this why year? Why I am showing this year? Uh, 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 this is a familiar in a Indian, uh, Hindu, Indian uh, Hindu uh, religious uh, image. Religious, uh, image. Because uh, this is actually this is actually this is actually, this is actually, this is actually, this is actually 
என்னுடைய வாய்ஸ் கேக்குது ரவிவர்மாஸ்வதி Uh, the main point here uh, the main point here uh, ravi verma has framed ravi this Varma imagination framed this that's why i am telling you that's why i am telling you excuse me participants is anyone who is uh, opening the mic was, uh, please kindly mute your mic please kindly mute your mic participants please mute your mic participants please mute your mic we are hearing lots of feedback so it will be very comfortable for us to present this சரஸ்வதி but who who framed this image that's why i am insisting here this is by ravi verma so b- before ravi verma framed this nobody knows uh, uh, the image of saraswati that's the before ravi verma that's the point i am insisting so artist designers artists are creating artists are creating unimaginable wonderful images every artist has the role of presenting and new innovative thoughts to the society the role of artist is very uh, effective and uh, uh, it's a documentation the every image an artist creates is a documentation in the society in the history it's a documentation in the history so artist creates history artist uh, uh, produces Uh, uh, I have different uh, voices. Voices. in oil painting it's an it's a say ravi verma has created many uh, realis- realistic images in the history of uh, indian painting and he has done lot of efforts he has taken lot of efforts in uh, uh, reproducing images also he has he has invented a, a printing press he has uh, created a printing press offset press and for what he has created what he has uh, created as images uh, he has reproduced and he has taken the images to various places to display he has created the display process in indian painting history he has displayed various uh, posters uh, what he has created so after that only we have uh, we are now we are making a reproduction so the reproduction part uh, ravi verma has taken uh, an important role in indian uh, history that that i we have to uh, uh, the credit goes to ravi verma this is a, this is another famous one of the famous painting of ravi verma the lady with the lamp the lady with the lamp see the lighting and the facial uh, part the lighting the facial part and how the background is uh, framed here the color tones etc etc okay now let's move to infographics infographics is an important area in communication now infographics or graphic visual representations of information that are or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly 
they can improve cognition by utilizing graphics to enhance the human visual system's ability to see patterns and trends. So information, now we are using text and image interpre interpretation. Text and image interpre interpretation, now we are following in our everyday practice to make complex into simple. That's why this infographics plays effective role. So what are the uh, types of infographics? When should we use infographics? Illustrating the data, simplifying the complex information, comparing two or more things, or raising awareness. These are all the components of infographics. So types of infographics, timeliness, data visualizations, anatomy, processes and how to's, comparisons, list maps. So in such way, we are using these infographics. So data visualization, you know, we are creating the data into visuals. We have to present the concept in the exact time frame. And we have to frame everything in a structure. And we can compare things. To explain a concept, we can compare things. And we can list out things. And we can create maps. So these are all infographic representations. That's why I'm telling visually here. See what I have told here in the last frame, I am presenting here with visuals here. The types. So listing things, timeline, mapping, data visualization, comparison, flow chart, visual article. So there are seven common times what I have told in the last frame. Here I am visualizing the same. I think you could understand what is infographics. Let's move on to some important portraits done by me as an artist. I was a, uh, when I was a student in fine arts in 1985 to 90, I made one oil painting. That's why I want to share here. This is a painting. This is the painting uh, of Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, this is an important, I, I, I feel this is an important document in the history of painting. I have created in my studies, during my studies. Still I uh, retain this painting with my uh, uh, uncle. It's, it's in my uncle's house. I gifted to him. Uh, it's an oil painting. So he is the, the role of Dostoevsky uh, is very uh, famous in Russian literature. Another painting I have done, Vladimir Lenin, 1870-1924, to 1924, Russian revolutionary politician and political theorist. So what I say, the portraits are, portraits done by artists are documentation in history. Portraits done by artists are documentation history. That's why I have documented something as an artist I'm sharing with you. Albert Einstein, German-born theoretical physicist, widely acknowledged to be one of the greatest physicists of all time. Stand in watercolor. Karl Marx. This is done in pen. Scribbling with pen. This is done scribbling with pen. Gel pen. Karl Marx is very familiar. German philosopher, critic of political economy, economist, historian, sociologist, political theorist, journalist and socialist revolutionary. So making such Prominent person, portrait of making such prominent person is interesting. So that, so I, I spent my time in doing this drawing. Uh, 
to make a documentation uh, in my life. Marshall McLuhan, Canadian philosopher, one of the famous person who created the uh, uh, coined the word medium is the message, who made many research in understanding the medium, understanding the medium, understanding the media, the book he has uh, created is very uh, prominent in the history of media studies. So I made a portrait of uh, uh, to, to give a credit to Marshall McLuhan, I made this portrait. So this is my uh, presentation. Uh, I think I have done my part. Uh, uh, now I leave it to the audience. You can have, if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, Thank you, sir. Audience, you have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, you can post your comments in the chat box. Any questions? Anything related to image or image analysis or uh, any visual components, uh, doubt in visual components, you can ask. Good afternoon, sir. This is Dr. Mahalakshmi, Assistant Professor, School of Media Studies, Patrician Good College of Arts and Science. Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Uh, what is your advice for budding graphic designers from the point of view of visual perception, you know, their knowledge on colors, their knowledge on understanding images? What is your advice on this, sir? Uh, see, uh, today, this participants, please stay muted. Uh, some disturbance in the network. Okay, uh, Dr. Magalakshmi is there? I'm okay. off your mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what is what I'm saying. That uh, uh, graphic design uh, after digitize digitization has become into a different dimension. It has. Now it has become a different uh, dimension. It has, it has become an interactive design. The uh, concept of design itself became now interactive. Uh, so as new designers, so I, my suggestion to new designers, uh, they should understand uh, the elements and principles of design uh, uh, before uh, 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 making designs. They should understand the elements and principles. What is the purpose and what, is the, uh, what are the elements that study they have to undergo to understand the visual concept. It is uh, 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 all the whatever I am telling is available in the, uh, now in the social media. Uh, they can easily uh, learn, they can easily learn without any help. Any, any upcoming uh, designer can learn through social media the uh, basics, basics of design and uh, uh, principles. I think, Madam, is it okay? 
Is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I also lam, lam. Uh, you lam, know, lam. tell my students on the same. Mm. But uh, resource person, a senior resource person like you, if you say that will have a better impact on yes, the yes, students. Yes. That's why I wanted to ask you, yes, sir. Thank yes. you, sir. Yes. Okay, participants, any other questions? Okay. So in that case, I will put the feedback form in the chat box and use that for your feedback. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for this exceptional webinar. We hope the students got a chance to grasp the information which you gave. Uh, thanks for, once again, sir, for your time. Come over and interact with us. Now I call upon Dr. I, Mahalakshmi. Uh, I, I thank, uh, one, one minute, I thank both the institutions, uh, Chennai Vatican College and Bilvara University yeah. for creating this platform to share my views. I once again thank both the institutions. Yeah. It's a memorable time for me to spend with you Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. And it was really a pleasure hearing about you. And even my students, they have also got a very good exposure. Here, we, we were, we were uh, able to enhance the communication between both the sectors. And it was very useful for my students also. And it's a very, it's a very big pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. From RN. My thank you goes to you from the department. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. So I request Dr. S. Mahalakshmi, ma'am, from the Department of Health and Media to render the vote of thanks. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone here in Chennai, and good morning to everyone in Ethiopia. With immense pleasure, I render the vote of thanks uh, for the international webinar titled "The Real and Unreal: The Visual Perception of Images." First and foremost, I would like to thank the Almighty for having blessed us for the successful conduct of today's webinar. I would like to offer a special thanks to Dr. Ilango Sir, Head, Postgraduate Department of Electronic Media, St. Thomas College of Arts and Science, Chennai, for having taken his time off and providing us with useful insights and knowledge on the visual perception of images. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank the management of Patrician College of Arts and Science for motivating and providing us facilities to conduct collaborative sessions with students across countries. I would like to thank Bulehora University, Ethiopia for their sustained support in the conduct of various collaborative programs. A special thanks to Dr. Devishri Anbu, Assistant Professor, Department of Journalism and Communication, Bulehora University, Ethiopia. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the students and faculty members for their active participation in the program. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you yes, for yes.